All right, we're back in the shack, and today we're talking about geometry pipelines. I want to talk about the regular, the native geometry pipeline that we find inside of Grasshopper by default. I also want to talk about a super useful tool called the dynamic geometry pipeline, uh, which comes with human, which is an amazing plugin. All right. So definitely recommend checking out human, definitely recommend checking out the dynamic geometry pipeline. And I'm going to tell you, uh, I want to talk about some of the advantages to using this, this component. And, uh, but that being said, I still use the native geometry pipeline very often. Okay. So I want to talk about uh, the, the, the native pipeline is a lot more simple, um, easier, quicker to set up. The dynamic pipeline offers a lot more uh, customization and uh, a lot more parametric abilities. And I want to talk about how I used it in this um, grasshopper script that is assisting the uh, the modeling of, of my guitars. Okay. So, uh, so okay. Uh, we'll get it. We'll get into that in one minute, but let's just, I want to introduce you to the geometry pipeline. If you're not totally familiar with what this thing is. So in short, we know that we can uh, reference geometry using a parameter component. Of course, we can reference geometry this way. And so now we've just referenced this geometry right here. Um, but another way to do that is instead of referencing a BREP manually by selecting it, um, uh, by selecting it this way, instead we can reference a layer a layer in the Rhino document. Okay. Now the pipeline used to have an option, I believe, to choose um, to choose just the layer name, or you could or you could change it to full layer paths. But since uh, a certain update, um, now it's it's a defaulting to full layer paths. So let's say I want to reference this geometry that I just referenced. I'm going to look at where it is in my in my layer path structure and it's right here it's in this layer so because this is a, a sub layer this is a sub sub layer um, let me show you how we, we're going to do that so i'm going to type in the main parent layer which is origin 2 that's the name of this model origin 2 and then we go double colon and that's how we uh, drop down into the sub layer and then I have to name origin uh, body blank. And then we go double colon again to drop down into the next sub layer uh, area. And then I'm going to click the check mark. And it's still, we have this warning flag because it's still not working. And that's because we just need to select uh, what type of geometry we want to we want the geometry pipeline to uh, to pick up for us. And we can choose all of them. But usually we're just going to have one of them on. So I'm going to choose the B rep. And, uh, and I'm just going to... Uh, oh, I spelled blank wrong. <laughs> there we go. Now it's working. It's all good. So we've just pipelined this geometry from our Rhino document into Grasshopper without ever selecting it. And now if we change that geometry, you know, uh, you know, okay, so I should mention this, you know, one of the big advantages of this is that if we uh, take this geometry, if we don't use the pipeline, okay, no pipeline, and we import our geometry into Grasshopper with the parameter, uh, yeah, of course we can, you know, we can move this around and our grasshopper model will carry it, will follow it around and uh, we can still make, we can still make um, modifications to it. And our grasshopper model will follow those modifications. But this is where it's, it starts to fall apart is if we need to make a whole new one. Or if we start modifying it and, uh, with new geometry, it might, uh, it might, it might break that link. So if we need to make a new one, uh, or or if we want to, or if we modify it, 
in a way that will break the link, then um, then this 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 doesn't work anymore, and then we'll have to relink it again. Okay, so that's one of the disadvantages, right? And the advantage with the pipeline is that we never break the link as long as as long as our geometry is in that layer. Then uh, we're always referencing the right geometry, the correct geometry. So as long as we have our check mark on there and we're active in that layer, then uh, we're always going to be putting the right geometry in the right place. So I can put anything I want in here. A square guitar. Isn't that isn't there like a rectangular guitar? So now we're automatically referencing that geometry because I put it in the correct layer, right? So that's why the geometry pipeline is so powerful. That wouldn't have worked if we were using the BREP parameter, right? So anyways, we're pipelining in, okay? We've got our BREP, BREPs, multiple. Is there multiple BREPs in here? I guess so. Um, okay. And, and you know, okay, the, the, the native geometry pipeline is very simple. Um, we pretty much just covered everything there is to talk about it. Uh, well, there are some other things that you can go into if you want, but, um, for the most part, uh, you know, you can turn off locked objects and hidden objects if you want to have a bit more control. And, uh, you can change the, the name of it. If you only want to select objects with certain names, I've never used that wonder. I'm not sure exactly, um, I've never really thought about using the name. Anyways, let's 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 talk about the dynamic, the dynamic geometry pipeline, and essentially, it's the same component. It's essentially, fundamentally, it's the same component, except we have uh, except we have uh, parametric inputs for we have wire wire inputs for these. Uh, these uh, these options, right? So fundamentally, it's the same thing. We just have layer, name, and type. These two are switched, whatever, doesn't matter. And you'll see that the dynamic pipeline, like I mentioned here, this one, you, you used to be able to select the absolute near layer name or the full layer path. And the dynamic geometry pipeline still has that feature. So I'm gonna turn on match full path basically all the time, okay? You can also uh, turn off whether you want it to listen to attribute changes if you're making modifications a lot and maybe you don't want your whole script to be recalculating every time you make a change then maybe you want to turn that off uh, or if you want it to be automatically updating then you can leave that on so it's a good it's nice to have that preference close to hand so why is this such an interesting component well you know if if i was just going to set it up the same way uh, then it's not that interesting. If I just wanted to go like this, if I just wanted to put in the same information um, with a text box, then it doesn't it doesn't really become that interesting. Um, So that now we have the same result. And that was like, this is more cumbersome. If I'm going to just do this, then I'd rather just pick up the native geometry pipeline because it's uh, concise into one component. I don't have to set up my text boxes. But there are times when the dynamic geometry pipeline has huge advantages. And let's take a look at oh, an example of that. So here I have, I'm using this, this script here to help build certain parts of the guitar model. Okay. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a weird example, but, but I'm just, but I'm using it here cause it works. Um, I have three guitars here in this model. Okay. So I have three guitars and I have them, uh, carefully structured in these layers. I have origin one and origin two. It's these two guitars. It's the, the first version of this model and the second version of this model. And then I have, uh, something that I'm calling proto three. Okay. And so I have these three models and they're all, they all have a huge structure of sub layers. If I go in here, there's a tons of sub layers 
and they all have similar sublayer structures okay and they all have uh, similar requirements and I want to build out this script so that it works as a universal system I want it to be a system I don't want it to build it as a for specifically for one guitar or something I want to be able to use it as a system so that I can uh, make changes easily to to use it as a tool for different guitars and so as long as I'm structuring my layers properly I can uh, I can use that dynamic pipeline to to address certain sub layers and uh, to to reference the correct geometry for each guitar so does that make sense uh, I'll, I'll give you an example okay so if we're looking at the you know this is a, a, a tool this right here is a tool where uh, I'm uh, drawing I'm drawing the the neck the curve of the neck and at the nut and the curve of the neck uh, at the bottom of the neck at the um, you know around the twenty second fret and Grasshopper is taking that information and it's and then I'm also uh, inputting what I want. The, the radius to be on the neck uh, at the nut and at the at the bridge the radius so it's also generating the fingerboard uh, the fingerboard shape and then it's measuring it and uh, it's giving me a measurement of, of how big that neck is based on you know how based on what kind of shape I give it with this NURBS curve okay and it'll just keep measuring it and then I can use this to reference I can use this measurement and I can reference standard uh, standard uh, neck uh, thicknesses and this is all in grasshopper this is all being displayed from grasshopper okay and this is a, so I would consider grasshopper a tool here right uh, it's just a, an assisting tool and this right now is referencing the the second guitar but I, but I can change the parent layer right here okay I can change the parent layer and then it will change the layer, the full layer path that's being referenced. Okay, this is the most important part. I kind of walked around it for a bit, but I have a full layer path here. Okay, and the center line, you know, the center line is just basically referencing uh, the center, the center line that I want to that I that everything is built around. So you know, this is just one example. The center line is what I'm using to build the entire guitar around each each uh, model each. Each guitar has a different center line that I'm referencing to build my geometry on. And so once I choose this full layer path, it's origin two, uh, colon, colon, double colon, uh, center line. And because I have this cluster here, that's that's basically creating, uh, it's taking my pri their parent layer and then putting a semi, uh, double, semi, uh, double, double colon and then my uh, sub layer, right? So parent layer, double colon sub layer, and then it's joining that text. So that's what that cluster is doing. And that way, with the dynamic pipeline, right? I have this list that this dictates the parent layer. This list, uh, this uh, panel dictates the sub layer. My cluster turns that into a full layer path. And then, and then everything is referenced um, and then I'm putting in the right full layer path into my dynamic pipeline, right? So if I change my uh, parent layer, everything will shift over to um, a different uh, the, the, a different guitar. It's changing my full layer path, right? See how the full layer path... Now this totally... <laughs> this is... Uh, I haven't used this script in a long time, so something's like not going right but I'm just demonstrating to you the concept of it, right? So don't, don't, uh, you know, don't get your knickers in a knot just because it's not working, okay? Because that, that's my fault. That's not, <laughs> there's nothing to do with this example, okay? So the point is you can change your full layer path by just changing uh, the parent layer, right? See? And you wouldn't be able to do that with a normal geometry pipeline. And um, oops. And so that's that's the point of that, and that that's one of the advantages of the dynamic 
the dynamic uh, geometry pipeline okay and because i have um because i'm referencing tons of stuff in my rhino document i've got uh i have something like 10 10 pipelines here and if this script is working properly again I, i'm not making guitars right now so i'm just going back to this script that i built uh two years ago so i don't i don't know how to use it i don't really know how to use this thing anymore but um but at the time this geometry the dynamic geometry pipeline was super useful because since i have like 10 uh 10 pipelines here referencing different geometry i just have to change one list value to change the parent layer if i had 10 normal pipelines i would have to go in there and change the parent layer for each one individually uh, in order to achieve a similar result, okay? So, so the dynamic, the dynamic geometry pipeline allows us to do uh, interesting things like that, right? So this is an example where we just change the parent layer and not the sublayer. Maybe you would want to change just just the sublayer. Maybe, maybe you have geometry where you just want to use use a list here at the sublayer level, and then you can just go through different. Uh, reference different geometry of the sublayer instead of changing the parent layer. Or maybe you don't even have a full layer path. Maybe you don't have any sublayer structure, but you can still use a list to go through different layers. That is something you couldn't do with the native geometry pipeline. Okay. So, you know, um, maybe I should fix this thing up and and uh, I'll definitely have this thing fixed up at some point. We can actually like really go through what's going on in this script because it's actually pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, again, I haven't used it in a long time, but uh, maybe we can do that at some point. But for now, you know, I think uh, I think I covered just generally the concept of why I think the dynamic geometry pipeline is so interesting. Um, and I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, and that's all for this video. All right. Have an amazing day, everybody. Have an amazing day. Peace.